Yo guys, what is up? Max and our Lords of the Fallen video, and today we're going over my strength build. Now, I played the full game all the way through the credits rolls as a strength build, um, and in this video I want to talk about what the best gear in the game is for strength, but also give you some guides for progression on strength, uh, what weapons to look at when you're just starting out, what weapons to look at for mid game, and what are going to be your best options for end game. We're going to be talking about damage scaling with strength, uh, armor, poise, all that things you need to know. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. So the two best strength weapons in the game that I've found are the Sword of Skin and Tooth and the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer. Now you get the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer uh, towards the very end of the game and it has the best strength scaling uh, and the highest damage output of, it seems to be like any weapon in the game. Uh, it's pretty ridiculous. I don't have it at plus 10 right now, but even at a plus nine, it's got S rank uh, strength scaling as well as doing physical damage, holy damage, fire damage, and wither damage. However, you're going to play through maybe 85% of the game without this. So for the rest of the part of the game, you're going to be using the sword and the skin and tooth. I will have at the end of the video where to actually find all of these things. But the thing that's amazing about the sword of the skin and tooth is not only is it a strength weapon with a plus strength scaling, but it also deals burn damage. And burn damage is damage over time in this game. And burn damage over time is not great against mobs it's solid but it's very good against bosses a lot of the times you can deal over a thousand damage uh per burn application with just your burn damage without scaling like your inferno or anything so very very solid extra damage on top of it now before you get the sword and the skin and tooth uh i would recommend picking the wolf guard class that's going to give you the war wolf sword to start with once you get a little bit further into the game i would recommend picking up the crimson rector sword you can get these from the flame knights um once again towards the end of the video i'll have like a more detailed discussion about where to actually find these things but basically you go from crimson rector sword um then you're going to f find the bludgeon um the bludgeon is the best early game strength weapon and then once you're kind of into the mid game, you're going to pick up the sword of the skin and tooth that's going to carry you for the rest of your playthrough. And then towards the very end of the game, you can pick up the Iron Wayfarer's hammer, which is just completely busted. Now, um, I am actually able to dual wield these two strength weapons and I'm not using anything that's increasing my equip load. I'm using heavy armor. Um, and so how am I able to use two of the best strength weapons in the game at the same time? Uh, and that is because I made a certain decision. Uh, once again, I'll talk about this at the end of the video that allowed me to get a very special rune. Runes are things that you can apply to your weapons to change uh, the amount of physical damage they do, the amount of holy damage they do, uh, reduce their weight, increase their poise damage. They're basically like modifying your weapons and there is a very special rune that you can get in this game that will set a item's weight to zero, which allows me to put the Iron Wayfarer's hammer at zero weight, allowing me to effortly, effortlessly dual wield both of these weapons, two weapons that would be like making me heavy alone if I was just wearing both of them. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. And what I like to do is I use uh, the sword right now because uh, it's still my plus 10 weapon. And then if I have a window or an opening to just deal ridiculous amounts of damage, I can whip out both of these things um, and do a crazy dual wield attack. Now, whether you have these weapons equipped in like a different order uh, can actually change your attacks. So I actually like having the sword and the skin and tooth in my left hand um, and then the hammer in my right. If I do my L1 R2 attack, it's going to do this like dash swing attack that will one shot. It, it kills just about everything in the game that I found uh, in terms of mobs. And then if I swap those around, let's say I put the sword there and then the hammer... Let's put the hammer in the first slot. Now we do the exact same button combination. Um, and I do this like overhead slam. So not as much distance to cover, just a little detail. Uh, I personally enjoy putting the sword first and then the hammer afterwards uh, for the move set that it gives me. Now for throwing weapons, I like using the bloody hatchet. Um, the reason I like using this so much is because it applies bleed. Uh, as you can see, it's got 50 bleed. It scales off of B strength uh, and it's very quick to use. Um, the higher damage option is the trapper crossbow. This thing is pretty nice. It gets high strength scaling. It does holy fire and wither damage, but it doesn't apply any bleed and bleed is also going to be beneficial to this build. Uh, whenever you're in the wither form, uh, you need to recuperate some of your health. So as soon as you go into the umbral form, uh, now the only way to get this health back that's this like white bar is by doing damage. And we have big wind up attacks and like 
we've got like slow recovery frames on a strength build so sometimes uh, it's not super safe to jump on into an enemy where you have like all of this health that you need to recover so that's why i like using the throwing knife uh, i can pluck up this like throwing hatchet just literally chuck one of them and i will get all of my health back uh because it's dealing that much damage um and it will apply bleed so you can throw a few of them and then apply bleed bleed in this game is not a damage over time it is a debuff meaning that enemies that are bleeding will take more damage from all of my physical damage and i am doing a lot of physical damage so now we've got a strength build that's incorporating bleed and burn um to amplify our damage and dot enemies um, and it's just a really, really strong combo. Now to talk about my armor and rings, uh, I'm currently using the uh, Jadel Bone Armor, Heavy Torso, and Medium Arms, uh, just because these things, uh, I think, add to the, like, Oonga Boonga uh, look that I was kind of going for with this build. And then we've got the Lord's Mask on. Uh, it's a helmet you get much later. Uh, but I really like this look. You kind of look a bit like a uh, Oonga Boonga Demon, uh, which is great for me. But mainly we're using these things because they bring us perfectly to that medium bar. So we're not into heavy and they give us the best stat combinations that I've found from our gear. Uh, poise in this game is a little bit weird um, in that it just doesn't seem to be that important uh, or that noticeable. Poise literally doesn't work in PvP, and sometimes you will get interrupted while doing heavy attacks, even with heavy armor on uh, your, like, strength weapon. So I'm hoping they do a patch or, like, a fix for Poise stuff. Um, and then we'll get into our actual, like, uh, rings and jewelry. So I am using the Warrior's Claw. Uh, you can get this fairly early on. It's going to increase all of the physical damage that I do, but it also increases my physical defenses. Pretty perfect for the playstyle that we're going for. The other ring that I'm using is the Melchior's Ring. This is going to allow me to deal additional physical damage, uh, which is once again, perfect for us. More physical damage, more physical damage. We're pumping that physical damage, even though we do additional fire, holy wither and stuff like that. Uh, physical is the largest portion of our damage. And then the last ring is totally up to you. I found this to be really cool. This is the Ring of Infernal Devotion. This means that inflicting burn buildup simultaneously inflicts ignite buildup. And now our Sword of Skin and Tooth also inflicts ignite ignite is also a debuff meaning that enemies that are ignited are going to take additional fire damage every time that we hit them and we're now we've got bleed we've got burn we've got ignite um uh, and so i found this to be really cool another option that you could use that you get fairly early is the ring of knight's fire this makes you deal additional fire damage and wither damage uh the grievous ring gives you additional health back um, when you kill enemies, which can be really nice. And if you're lacking in stats, you could just throw in the brawn ring to give you additional strength. Um, I currently have 65 strength, so not really needing any more additional at the moment. Um, but this is the ring that I like. Once again, end of the video, we'll talk about where to get all of these items. Lastly, for stat priorities, you're going to want to put the majority of your points into strength. Uh, obviously, that is the biggest damage scaler for us. Strength soft cap is 50. The hard cap is 75, meaning you're not going to want to put any more points past 75. I'm at 65 right now, so I've still got a bit of ways to go. Um, endurance's soft cap is 40, with its hard cap being 60. Wait, I've like at 25 endurance dual wielding, and I have zero issues. Um, so endurance, not as important. And then vitality, soft cap is 40. So I've got one more point to get to there. Um, soft cap, meaning that you're going to get diminishing returns after you put more points past that soft cap. Obviously, with strength being our damage, it's okay to go past that because it's still additional damage, but we're not going to need the extra health or endurance. Um, so I would prioritize keeping, if you're like looking to do this to level up, I would probably try to keep your strength about 10 points higher at all times than your vitality at least. And then once you get towards the like end of the game, you're going to start cranking that strength up much higher. Um, but having your strength maybe 10 to 15 points higher than your vitality, it's going to be usually pretty good balance. And then have your endurance maybe like five to 10 points below your vitality. Um, so every time you're leveling up, you're going to be prioritizing strength, then vitality, then endurance. We don't need agility. We don't need radiance and we don't need inferno. Next up for our runes, uh, the best runes to put on strength weapons are the increased physical damage. Uh, there are weapon options for reducing the weapon's weight, increasing the physical damage, but reducing strength attribute scaling and increasing the strength attribute scaling. The biggest damage increase for your weapons is just the straight up increased physical damage. We've got the Tumul uh, rune that's going to give you health upon kill, which is very nice. Um, and then I've got another increased physical damage. The Iron Wayfarer Hammer, uh, ideally you would have the two increase to physical damages. I just haven't farmed more 
Uh, so I've got strength scaling and posture damage, but the big important rune here is the crafter's essence rune. This is what sets the weapon to be zero weight. And when it's zero weight, that means you can wield it for basically free. Uh, it sets the weapon stat and weight requirements to zero. Uh, this is nuts. In order to socket this rune, you have to get this weapon up to, I think it's a plus eight. So it, you're not going to be able to use this weapon once you get it until you upgrade it. Uh, so that's why this is more of sort of like a late game option that you can add on to the build. But the sort of skin and tooth is going to be your like kind of bread and butter for most of your playthrough. For the umbral eyes that you're going to socket into your lamp, uh, I've got on in my primary slot the one that whenever we dodge an enemy, we're going to add wither damage onto them. I obviously am missing a lot of eyes. Uh, there is one that allows you to deal uh, wither damage on your basic attacks, but no longer do like normal damage. Uh, apparently, there's one that lets you deal like heavy wither damage on your heavy attacks. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, the thing to understand about wither damage is if you apply it to an enemy and they hit you, they actually get that health back. And so using the sword of skin and tooth, which applies the burn, will actually proc that wither damage. Uh, so that's a really nice interaction uh but i found it to be a little bit frustrating to use because if i didn't land the hit or if i didn't ignite them i would watch a boss basically heal up on me uh by attacking me or attacking my uh companion if i had an ally summoned and i did wither and then they hit my ally they could heal that damage back up um so i am using the um dodging applies wither to enemies and then the uh, regain plus 15 percent withered health upon striking an enemy this just means that when we have that wither debuff on us, we can get rid of it much much faster. Now that we've kind of gone over the build, I want to show you guys where to get all of the weapons and gear. Um, if you don't want to know where these things are, um, you can click off the video. That was the build. But for those of you that are curious to where to actually acquire all of this gear, uh, I want to show you to the best of my ability. So the Sword and Skin and Tooth, you're going to want to travel to the Vestige of Lydia, the Numb Witch. Once you're here, uh, we're going to take this little pathway... Um, you jump down, grab onto this ladder. And then we're going to head to the left here. Jump down here. And then we're going across. Uh, you can go into Umbral for this. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, there's going to be a lot of enemies here that are going to try to kill you. Uh, just run past them. Um, and then you'll see this wall. You can use your Umbral lamp to phase through it. Go up these stairs, take this left. And then you're going to find a chest here. When you open it up, uh, you will be rewarded with the Sword of Skin and Tooth. For the Warrior's Claw, you're going to want to take this like elevator by the bell tower. Uh, you're going to need the Pilgrim Perch Key, which you can purchase for like 9,500 souls. Uh, but this is where you meet the Blacksmith. And then there's this door um, right next to the Blacksmith that you need the Pilgrim Perch Key to open. And then right there on the Lidge. Uh, I do fight some of these enemies in this clip, but right there on the Lidge is going to be the amulet that increases all the physical damage that you do, which is perfect for our strength build. For the Iron Wayfarer Hammer, which is the best strength weapon in the game that I found, uh, you're going to want to travel to the Vestige of the Forgotten Guardian. Um, this is Upper Calrath. You're going to come through the mines to get here, beat the moss in the binds, um, and then you'll unlock this area. However, the boss that, that drops this doesn't actually drop or doesn't actually spawn until uh, you've basically almost completed the game. Uh, so you're going to want to kill all of the like main story bosses, and then you're going to come here, and then you're going to have a boss fight at this gate. Um, I'm not going to show any footage of that, but when you kill that boss, you're going to be getting the um, Iron Wayfarer's Hammer. To get the Faithful Bludgeon Hammer, uh, you're going to want to come from Skyrest. That is the like starting area bonfire, kind of like the main hub. Uh, come out this way, and then you're going to be headed along these cliff sides, uh, which actually double back on themselves. As you can see, there's like an area down there. You're going to go out and around, and then you'll eventually end up kind of down towards this way. I don't think I could make that jump, so I'm just going to show you the shortcut. Uh, but once you're down there, you're going to get the key that will allow you to make this shortcut. So you're going to have to go the long way your very first time around. And then once you have the key, you can just do this little shortcut. Um, but what you're going to be doing is running all the way out here. Uh, when you're doing it for the first time, you're going to be out on this bridge. I'm just showing you guys the, this way just because it's a little bit faster for me. But you're going to be up on that bridge there. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to pull out your lantern. When you pull out your lantern, you can uh, walk out onto this bridge. And then when you swap out of your lantern, the bridge will fall. And then you can land right here. Uh, and then this is where you're going to pick up the Faithful Bludgeon, uh, which is 
probably the best strength weapon that you're going to find for quite a bit of time when you start the game. It's going to make you very strong very early on uh, and carried me through about half of the game. And then once you get to that halfway mark, then you can pick up the sword of like the skin and flesh or skin and tooth, uh, which is just a fantastic weapon. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I know I look a little different at the end of the video. I'm actually already starting on a Pyromancer guide because Pyromancer is also really sick. Uh, so expect that video in the next day. Um, and before I end the video, I do want to give a huge thanks to Fightin' Cowboy. He and I both received early access. Uh, we played some co-op together and we worked uh, on figuring out a bunch of things. And he helped me find the like the sword of the skin and steel. And so uh, I wouldn't have been able to make this video without him. So if you guys haven't checked him out, uh, absolutely do so. Amazing Souls-like content creator. Um, and yeah, guys, that is it for the video. I will catch y'all in the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.